So I've got this AP1000 from Alpha ESS. Uh, actually, just so you guys know, this one was sent to me to review. It does not change my review at all about the system, but I want you to know that up front, and I'm going to show you exactly how good this operates as well as the issues with it that I found. This may or may not be the system to work for you, but it does have some really good attributes and some versatility as well as some ability to use it slightly for emergency preparedness, but also just for portable power. That's really where this is going to shine is just having portable power wherever for charging laptops and drones, DC fridges, stuff like that. So we're going to be doing a discharge test. We're going to be doing a solar charging test, wall charging test. We're going to be doing all of that stuff here on this video. So that way you know how good this system is. That way you know if it's a system that will work for you or not. Stick around for this full review of the Alpha ESS AP1000. So for the specs on this, it has a 1036 watt hour lithium ion, that's lithium NMC battery, it's got a 1000 watt inverter and 180 watts of solar input on the charge controller. Obviously right up front, the charge controller is an issue because it's only 180 watts. And since this has a thousand watt hour battery in perfect conditions with it making 180 watts, which is extremely rare for any system to actually do their full solar input, it's going to take about six hours to charge up. And since there are only five to six solar peak hours in a day, that's a problem because that's based on max solar input, maximum amount of peak hours for solar in a day, and not running anything while you're charging it up. That's the biggest issue for me right up front is the solar input is not that great. But wait, stick with me for a few more minutes because I want you to see this, what I'm going to show you here in a minute with the solar charging. That way you know how good this works. Some of the cool features is it does have a dual wireless charging pad up top. Uh, it does have a big bright light here on the back. It's really not that heavy. It's pretty easy to move around. It does have a carry handle. Uh, it has kind of a Jackery-esque feel to it as far as all the plastic and they're using yellow instead of orange. Uh, but the front is really quite basic. You got a thousand watts of pure sine wave inverter output right here between these three outlets. You got your USB outlets right here. We do have a 100 watt USB-C, so that's always nice to see right there. Our typical 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter or what's called 55-25 uh, barrel ports here. I want to hear what you guys use these for because I see them on all the solar generators and I know there's like CPAP machines that use that, but what other things are you guys using on these? Because I might like to test those. It does have a normal cigarette lighter plug right here and you just turn on each section as you need it. And so if you want this top button here, it says info and you can click it and it'll give you a quick readout of what's going on. And the screen is quite small. And so here it says that there's no watts going in, no watts going out, batteries at 100%. And then if you double click it, you'll see this blue light turn on on the top. And that basically means that it's on. And then if I wanted to use a cigarette lighter plug right here, I can just click that on. If I want to do AC, click that on. This is the solar and wall input. So it does come with a wall charger. We've got right here, it's got this big adapter brick. But the biggest issue is it doesn't charge very fast at all. Probably one of the biggest things I really dislike is it doesn't even come with the solar charging adapter. So up here, this is a 5521 barrel port. So this is a 5525 to MC4 adapter here. And then this is a 5525 to 5521 adapter. And I just happen to have this around. And so it'll plug in right here. Uh, but as soon as I take off that adapter, it definitely will not go in. It's just odd that they market this as a portable power station that can be charged by solar, but they're not even going to supply you with the charging adapter, which just, that really frustrates me. Okay. Just Give the stuff you need to make it work. It's really not that complicated. They can manufacture these for just a couple of bucks. Just that really, really uh, cooked my bacon there. So anyway, moving on, the output is pretty good on this. We're going to show that here in a second. And the solar input, I'm going to show you here right after that. So let's go ahead and jump right into the output test to see if it can truly output the 1,000 watts continuously. If it does it for at least 15 minutes, then it's good to go. So let's go ahead and check that out.
So one thing I'm really impressed with this output test is it went for 52 minutes at a 1C discharge rate. That basically means 1000 watt load out of a 1000 watt hour battery, basically. And so it's a 1C discharge rate. And usually efficiency tests are done at like a 0.2 or even a 0.3C rate, meaning we would do the same test, but run it at like two or 300 watts instead of a thousand watts. And it went for 52 minutes. That gives it an 87% efficiency rate at a 1C discharge rate, which is actually very impressive. The last few systems I did were at like a 76% efficiency rate from the inverter output. So that is very impressive. That's one thing that Alpha ESS has done very well with this unit right here. The downside though, is I don't know if you noticed in the end of that hyperlapse is that rate basically when it got to 10%, it shut off. It went down a little bit below 10% and it shut off. So it wasn't the actual 100%, but we're able to get 87% out of it, which was impressive all on its own, even with the percentage still showing on the screen a little bit. Now this thing is warm. I would not say hot. The, this is probably one of the warmest uh, solar generators that I've tested as far as doing a 1C discharge and the heat that's on it. And so this will need to cool off before we do any charging on it because if it's hot and you do charging, you can cause issues. So I'm gonna let this cool off and then we'll do the solar charging. So I've got a 200 watt solar panel connected to this. I checked the voltage before I connected everything. Right now the sun is out and we're getting about 66 watts now. So we'll see if this goes up. It's really interesting. It says, oh, you saw it there for a second. It was saying that the output was 90 watts, but there's nothing turned on on this. And it's done that for the first 30 seconds or so when I turn this unit on. So we're up to 70 watts here. Let's see if it keeps climbing. So these are the solar panels I've got out right now. And this first one, is what is running the alpha ess but you can see it's in complete full sun so that's a 200 watt panel and we're maxing out around 70 watts i want to go ahead and put this on the river to just to see what the difference is here i'm going to do this live so that you can see there's no difference in what i'm connecting here so we got that connected now let's see what goes into here so immediately we hit 70 80 90 100 wow 150 160. Wow, so right off the bat, we're at 160. That's more than double than what the Alpha ESS is. And they have almost the exact same charge parameter for connecting a solar panel. So the EcoFlow River 2 is definitely having way better solar input than this unit here. The Alpha ESS definitely is seeming to have some issues with using that solar panel. And then to show again right here, you got the same cable, I'm gonna plug straight in, watch what happens when I connect this. I get a light shining in the back, the screen turns on. This is at is, is this is at zero percent. The output says 90 watts. I've got a flashing battery sign. And this 90 watts output stays right here. This is going up here as far as the input goes. And once again, we're maxing at 70 watts. We know for a fact that we were getting 160 watts over here and we're not getting more than 70 here. So definitely a red flag, unfortunately, on the Alpha ESS because it is not putting anywhere close to the 180 watts that it says it can do. And we are definitely within the charge parameter that is set for this unit. So there you have it as far as the output and the solar input and everything like that. The wall charger is extremely slow. Uh, it barely puts in 180 watts uh, when it can. The solar cable does not come with the unit. I think Alpha ESS needs to fix that. So if you're watching this video, Alpha, just fix that. That's just, you need to supply that stuff. The screen, nothing special at all, but it does stay on all the time, which is something that I do like. Inverter efficiency, extremely good. I would bet that we would see above 90% efficiency if we did a 0.2C discharge rate. Everything else is pretty standard, nothing super special on it. So really not cool on the solar input, but very cool on the AC output. Only you can decide if this is something that you would use. Personally, I would not use this for emergency backup power. It simply doesn't have enough storage or expandability or fast enough solar recharge in order to use it in an emergency situation for running something just like a refrigerator. Now, that being said, it could definitely be used for lots of power off grid for powering cordless power tools or even many uh, corded power tools. It could be great for recharging drone batteries, running laptops, a DC fridge on a road trip, stuff like that. Uh, but there isn't a car charger with this either. If I had this in my car trying to run a DC fridge, I couldn't be charging it up while using the DC fridge to try to keep this topped off for when the car is off. There's uh, 
some good things and some bad things. And personally, sorry to say this, but the bad things outweigh the good things in my opinion, but that may be different for you. Check it out. If you're interested, I'll have links down below. I do appreciate Alpha ESS sending this out. Uh, but it's not one that I'm going to recommend, unfortunately. So thank you so much for being here. If you want to become a supporter of the channel, go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. Also like the video if you guys made it this far. I mean, if you made it this far, you obviously like the video. And if you want to see more content like this, as well as other preparedness things, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for being here. Be prepared. I will see you guys in the next video.